everyone, and thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm Rixie, one of the content creators here at Collector's Maze. My guest today has conquered the culinary world, and then she set her sights on voiceover. She's a character with character, a warm-voiced, snarky Egyptian-American, the HBIC on LinkedIn, and I imagine everywhere she goes. Everyone, uh, Rochelle Simpson. Uh, Rochelle, uh, welcome to the maze. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Well, I, I'm, I'm thoroughly excited you're here. Uh, it, just right off the bat, I mean, I, I, I have to admit, I had to Google HBIC. I had, I'm like, you're not, I'm like, you're what not is the only that? person that's that? told me that. <laughs> and we'll just let everyone else Google it because, you know, they're just going to have to wonder. Well, it, it's, it's the, the head gal in charge, right? Exactly, yes. I actually have a whole email campaign about that specifically because, you know, some people, I, I once did a poll on LinkedIn, like, is it inappropriate to have this? It was just like a, kind of a fun thing. Like, is it inappropriate to have this in your email signature? And it, the responses I got were hilarious because so many people were like, oh, no. you know, that's funny. You would be my favorite person. But then there were like, you know, this other group of people that were like, absolutely not. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. So. I, like I said, I had to look it up. So what was, how did the poll come out? I mean, what did, so you got some that said yes, some that said no. I mean, was it more one way or the other? Um, it was probably more so people that thought it was funny, um, which is good because that's how it's intended to be. But there were, I mean, I'd have to, this was a while ago. It was probably like two years ago. I would have to look. It was probably like 25% of the people that were like, nah. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm like, maybe those people shouldn't work with me then. <laughs> Well, you know, exactly. It, it, it's a filter, right? It, it, you filter out that oh, yeah, way. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Yeah. Uh, all right. So, um, you know, you mentioned on your website, on your about page, right, about um, that you love to embarrass your kids uh, with a song and dance, right? So I, I want to know, I want to, when I read that, I was like, what, uh, what is your go-to song? I mean, what's the one that just gets them the most? Oh my gosh. You know what? Well, it changes with whatever is in at the moment. Okay. Um, so like grocery stores, I feel like they are catering to my generation right now. Cause they're like, you know, moms are shopping all the time. <laughs> so I feel like whatever's playing at the grocery store is usually on point, which is so, something so it's I what, never, what, what I'm, the grocery store is putting you through. You're, you're there with you it, know, right? You just yeah, got to, it's something I never thought I'd say, but it's true. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. That's fair. But, you know, I, I love I sing um, I Will Survive Every Time I Karaoke, and that's definitely a go-to. I also really love the singer Pink, so Never Gonna Not Dance Again. That's another one. That my daughter has me sing it in character. Pink in character. All right, I'm going to put you on the spot because I want to see that one. Can you, can you give us oh some of that gosh. one? Okay, well, the character is a it's a stuffy, a little stuffy animal that she has that I, I'll do a voice for. What's the stuffy's name? Lulu. Lulu. <laughs> I love that. I love that. It's really, oh gosh, I have to turn my game down if I'm going to do it. I, I, whatever you need to do, do it. I want to, oh my, okay. If, if it's I'm not, not good, putting you, you on the spot, <laughs> if I'm not putting you on the spot. Um, well, it's just a higher register. I'm like, am I warmed up enough for this? Let me, I'll try. You, you get you final say on everything, Rochelle. Thank you. Everything. Thank you very much. Okay. She goes, never going to not dance again. Nice. It's just, and it, she thinks it's hilarious, but if, if it's just silly. I, I, I enjoy, well, I don't say I enjoy, I, I do embarrass my kids, uh, um, but you know, at this point that they're just used to it. They're just used to it. Cause you know, a lot of, I mean, a lot of what it is was like this stuff back here. I mean that, I don't know if you could see that guy over there. Uh, let's see if I can move it over there a little bit. Yeah. Here. In the costume, see this guy right. There we go. This yes. guy right here. You know, mm -hmm. that's they're like, Dad, come on. But you know, now they're <laughs> the point where it's cool, so they don't they don't mind it so much anymore. Uh, yeah, it's like the cool thing now. Yeah, you know. Well, and, and some of them have come out to cons and cosplayed a little bit with me. So I mean, we have fun. We have fun. I mean, the family that cosplays oh. together. Is that right. is that something you guys have done? I mean, do you, are you into cosplay? I have not. My husband has. Well, he used to. I, I'll say, you yes. know, once kids are in the mix, it's like, forget everything yeah, else. Yeah, I mean, you don't have a life of your yeah. own. I, yeah. 
Yeah. So maybe in the future, him and I will do it together. Because I remember when we first met and he like had all these things, like he was building his own costume and stuff. And he had like this long, like eight year running tabletop game. And <sighs> he was very into all of it. And I, I just, I haven't done it. There are nerds yet. everywhere. We are everywhere. Yeah, it, Everywhere. Everywhere. All right. So, um, I just I want to go into you know voiceover. Why you know you went you you went down the culinary path, right? So you you were you were a uh, a personal chef, is that right? Yes, I was a personal chef. And how long yeah. have you done that? I was in the culinary world for ten ish years total, um, maybe just just over ten years. I went to culinary school. I actually worked at a French restaurant, um, a pretty um, well known fresh, French restaurant here in Southern California. Ooh. And then, I, but I was a single mom. I was like, I can't do this. And then, um, decided to open a personal chef business. And I did the personal chef business I did for about eight years. Nice. And it's so personal chef. And then what, um, I mean, what brought you to voiceover? What, I mean, what was that? What was that spark that said, you know, this is what I want to do. Yeah. You know, I always sang like, all the time in choir and even in culinary school you would find me like at the dish pit just singing Disney songs and whoever was with me would sometimes sing with me it would depend on who it was you know sometimes they're like please shut up but <laughs> I, I just me. I'd have been, yeah, I'd have been I, right there with you well thank you because that's you know it was my thing so anyway I I always love to sing and um you know with my kids reading to them and doing voices and all of that I just, I was like, gosh, I just really, really want to pursue this. And through especially the last, like, you know, several years with the push for diversity, I thought maybe there's a place for me because for a long time, I really did not think there was, you know, I didn't think it was possible, to be honest. Um, and then I, I just, you know, I decided to do it. And I, voiceover is so fun. It's boundless. Like you, you don't have limitations and barriers from your physical appearance, mm. which is what I think most actors love about voiceover is that you can be anything you want to be. It, that's, that's pretty freeing. I mean, um, yeah, cause it, um, uh, I like that. I, I've done a little, a little local, local acting here and it, you know, live action you got i mean if you don't fit you don't fit right i mean if i'm not you know i'm like there's roles only so many roles for for my my you know um type you know demographic uh, but i like i like that voiceover offers you know almost unlimited opportunities I mean, i'm sure there's still a little bit of you know range there i guess it's all yeah of course of course but you know i'm not limited in like <laughs> Only like Middle Eastern looking women with curly hair, or whatever, you know, <laughs> I, it doesn't matter. And I, I mean, accents typically right now that, you know, authentic casting is a really big deal. So not everyone is utilizing all of the accents in their toolbox. That was something I learned very quickly. Like nobody really cares how flawless my British accent is or my whatever accent, because they'll find someone who's native to that region uh -huh. um, if they want that accent. Oh, that's so, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So are they more, is that what you're finding? They're more likely to cast native uh, speaking, you know, like you said, British or, or Spanish or along those lines versus finding someone that can pull the accent off? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, there are some, the smaller roles, they they might, you know, to save money, they might use one actor for several things. Mm -hmm. um, but definitely like Disney, it's, you know, Disney, Dreamer, like all the big ones. Mm -hmm. They they don't have any limitations, <laughs> you know. They'll find the person that's perfect. Um, but for instance, I did this uh, pilot, and they had me do at the end of the pilot or at the end of the episode. They were like, "Okay, well, you know, what other accents can you offer us?" And you know, I did a little bit of an Italian one, I think, and a little bit of a Spanish one. And my character was Egyptian, so I did that accent for the character. And so so sometimes it comes into play, but I was not playing the entire, you know, script mm -hmm. being Italian or being whatever. Okay, very cool. Yeah. Um, so so what, um, what are, what would you say are the three most um, important things to becoming a successful voiceover, you know, actor? Okay, so I, I had to think about this because 
there are so many things that you could say. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm absolutely. But, right. Uh, what it comes down to for my personal journey, mm -hmm. patience, resilience, and just wanting it. Uh -huh. um, obviously, patience, you know, you'd never know. Like, there are plenty of people who spend years and years without a big break, quote unquote, or without really making a full time living or, you know, um, it just you have to be patient with yourself and with everything and always look for ways to grow um, and resilience because there's going to be a lot of no's. You're going to hear m way more no's than yeses. They say a 10 percent booking okay. rate is I, I really was gonna high. I going to ask you that. OK, so 10 percent is high. So so for every yeah. for every hundred uh, auditions, you know, you can only expect 10 bookings at the, at the most. Right. And that's and that's, that's on the like, high end of the like, scale. Yeah, that's like the people who are actually booking very frequently. So, um, you know, you find that a lot of people find different ways to find work as opposed to just auditions and, and such. But anyway, you really need to be resilient. And then lastly, like wanting it is something it's not like, yeah, that sounds fun. Or people keep telling me I have a great voice or, you know, it looks easy. Like, no, 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 no. You have to want it like you need to have in the depths of your soul, a desire to perform if you don't have it. And when you have that gravitational pull that you're like, I, I have to perform, I have to get these characters out. That's different. If you really, really want it, that's different than like, yeah, that sounds fun. <laughs> Gotcha. Gotcha. Which, which is, I mean, you know, resiliency is one thing. I mean, that's, that's determination, but, but wanting it, I mean, you've got to, like you said, get out there and better yourself, uh, constantly work. I mean, it's not enough to, to beat down doors and get auditions, but if you've got to, you've got to have the goods, you know, so you've got to constantly be learning that. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's really, it's just like, you know, people call it passion. They call it whatever, you know, whatever the words are that there are so many. I, I just think it's like, I love this thing. It's so, um, it's more than just a good time on stage or a good time performing. It's like you have this need, this pull to serve the story and like make people laugh, make people think, make, you know, you know, by being a character and um, not everybody has that need to perform. So it, it, it's more than just like, you know, it's that need drives, I think, everything else. Nice, nice. Um, so going back to the, the percentage, you mean the 10%, uh, which means there's a lot of no's. There's a lot of no's. Uh, how, how do you deal with the no's, with the rejection? I mean, what, what do you do to, to, to keep resilient, to keep pushing on? You know... I've definitely had times where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I keep knocking my, my little mic over here. Okay. <laughs> um, I've definitely had times where I thought, gosh, this is, um, I I'm having a dry spell. Like what's going on? I think the best way to deal with it is first of all, I don't look at it as rejection. Um, mm. I just look at it as, you know, whatever else is booking right now. First of all, I want to know what's booking because I want to know what I can do to better my chances. Ah. Um, I think about like, okay, maybe I'll take some more classes. Maybe I'll figure out exactly like, you know, what are my strengths and how can I hone in on that? And if I, if my strengths, which this has happened to me, if my strengths are not necessarily the thing that I love doing, can I do it enough uh, to like kind of keep me afloat and keep focusing on the things that I really want to get better at? Because, you know, for instance, I love comedy. I would love like my dream roles are all comedic, um, but people like my voice for other things. <laughs> I mean, I have done some comedy a little bit and it's always really, really fun. Um, but anyway, it's just kind of like always looking for that growth mindset thing. How can I get better at this? What can I do to get get what I want out of it. And I, you know, that's where the resilience comes in. You just, sometimes you have to get through a dry spell. Hmm. That, that sparked a, a question when uh, you were talking about knowing what's booking. Now, um, I, 
do you go and so something that you've auditioned for, do you go and find, you know, find, you know, who, who got the role, go to see whatever it was? Is that how you find that out? Or uh, do they, do they let you know? They never let you yeah, know. They don't say, let you know so, unless, haven't. yeah, <laughs> unless you get booked for the job, you don't really hear anything back ever. Um, maybe if you get shortlisted, they'll let you know. But yeah, typically it's, I, I audition for a lot of commercial stuff. So I'll go and I'll listen to the final spot once it airs and okay. kind of hear what's there for commercial stuff. I watch animation with my kids all the time. Um, so just kind of learning really what's in style and sometimes I found that it's a different vocal quality that's like quote unquote in you know mm. like right now in commercial it's very Gen Z um, they're catering to that younger crowd and so my voice doesn't really fit that profile doesn't mean that I'm not booking or like that I won't book or that you know but that is what's really popular, what the big brands are going for right now. So just being aware of that is really helpful also because you just, it's like, okay, that's not me. They have to go where the market's at. Yeah. Okay. So that, that makes sense. So, so you're, you're, um, you're, you're seeing, like you said, where the market's at and that, and that helps with the rejections. Like, well, I'm just not where the, where the market's at right now, or that's not where the market's at right now. And I guess you just yeah. go out and learn, learn a new, uh, try and, well, you really, I mean, you're not changing your voice. So, I mean, adapting to that, what do you do? You just look for different avenues and I guess, right? Yeah. So like, for instance, I mean, I do audio dramas. That's something I do most frequently. Um, and IVR and things like that. So while I do those things, I still get to play with characters. I get to play with my vocal placement. I'm working on all of these other skills and continuing always to train like I love I'm a huge advocate of just taking in-person classes even though it's voiceover mm -hmm. because you learn so much you get into your body and it you remember you know when it's voiceover I'm here by myself I'm talking to myself mm -hmm. <laughs> but you have to have a solid imagination to see that person and when you take those in-person acting classes um, you remember that every scene every script that you read there is a scene partner you just can't see him so getting that kind of exposure and experience is really helpful in the booth i like that i like that what um you know and we have we have you know listeners all over and you're you're in the uh la area correct yeah i'm just south of la so um voiceover schools i mean where um are, are, I haven't looked, I haven't researched a whole lot. Are they everywhere? Are they, I mean, I know there's some online uh, and I think they're mostly online actually. Oh, at this point. Okay. What, yeah. Which is, I see that's beneficial uh, for, you know, people like me. I'm in the Midwest, right? So, you know, if I wanted to pursue something like that, I would have to go that route because uh, I mean, I'm in Kansas city. There, there, there's more uh, of the film community happening here than, than, than I realized once I got involved with it. Um, but I don't think we have anyone doing voiceover. That's actually um, uh, how I, I, I've uh, through this found voice masters, and, and you know that was a, a great uh, a great group and some great opportunities there. But so, what um, is there any place that um, you recommend online? Uh, I mean, where where would you send people if you send them? Yeah, Voice Masters is a great one. I do. I love all of those women. They're so wonderful. <laughs> a lot of fun. <laughs> um, yeah, they're they're a lot of fun, especially in person. Um, you know, there are so many. I will say a few that stick out. If you're thinking like animation and video game, Jun Yoon is someone that I've trained with. He's great. Okay. Um, about, how, how's that spelled? June, like the month, okay. J-U-N, and Yoon is Y-O-O-N. Y-O-O-N. Okay, nice. Yeah, yeah. He's really, really great. Um Gosh, it's been so long since I've taken one of the, like, a class class that's been, like, an online one, but I've done so many, and I've done, a, I've taken a lot of workshops with um, all sorts of coaches outside of animation and video game mm -hmm. also, so Tina Morosco is great, um, Charlie Adler, who I've been dying to work with, is someone else that people just rave about, but his classes are, like, if you can get in, you're really, really lucky. <laughs> Okay. Nice. Nice. So if, if someone's just like, just fresh, just start, they really haven't, haven't gotten into uh, any, any type of theater acting or not, wh where would you have them start? I mean, what would you tell them? 
Okay, number one, <laughs> don't quit your day job. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's very important. <laughs> don't, yeah, like just dip your toe in. Um, don't listen to anyone who's like, you've got to spend a bajillion dollars and get your perfect booth and do all of this coaching. Like take a workshop, find out if you like it, find out if you're good at it, get on a pay to play before you go and invest in a fancy mic or a booth or anything like that. See if you're booking, um, you know, I mean, you, you have to at least have the bare minimum, like, uh, put some sound deadening equipment in like a closet and do what you can from there on a pay to play. Um, and then if you like it, you feel like you can do more, invest in some more classes, maybe some private coaching, um, figure out what genre you like and really, really get out there to understand the industry and your craft. So, it's it's also running a business, right? It's not mm. just about like, let me write a script into a microphone and record it and hit send and yay, paycheck. Yeah, so you're, you're essentially self-employed because you've got all all the the, the uh, administration behind that as well. Um, you said pay to play a couple times. I'm not familiar with that. What is that? Yeah, so pay to play. Their websites, their platforms, basically casting platforms. So they have become more popular over the last, I would say. Definitely the last five years, which I've been doing VO for around that, but I would say maybe 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, because in the past, it was kind of like agents were the gatekeepers. And if you didn't have an agent, you couldn't get the auditions and you couldn't get the jobs. So now pay to plays are a place where the clients can go directly and post their jobs. Oh. And talent, they have to pay a yearly fee to be part of the platform. And then they get to audition for these jobs. I will say, be very careful. If you're a new talent, be very careful about what you audition for. Because with new talent that uh, are just kind of like, yeah, hey, this looks great. A $2,000 job or whatever. Don't realize that they're training an AI model, an AI voice model. Uh, and then they'll, yeah. someone will be using their voice in perpetuity. And they'll never, ever see another penny you know, from that again. Yeah. yeah. So it's all about the fine print and then make sure you understand the fine print. Yeah. Yeah. Just be careful. Sometimes there is no fine print, you know, because the pay to plays, it's like anyone can post a job there practically. So mm. um, as long as you're aware of that and you know where it's going, because there is a fair way to do AI voices. So if you want to train an AI model, just make sure you're doing it fairly. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's um, such a... a, a <laughs> You know, it's I, my background. It I I do uh, it for a living. That's what that's what pays my bills. This this by no means pays my bills, <laughs> but uh, I do this because I enjoy uh, creative people and and being creative. Uh, but um, AI is is scary and fascinating at the same time. I mean, uh, and that's a whole yeah. that's a whole rabbit hole I can go down for hours because if you've <laughs> ever if you've ever seen if you've ever seen the uh, series Battlestar Galactica right there that that explains it all. You'll have to, and, no, I, and if you I, haven't seen it, it's not kid appropriate, so you're going to have to wait. <laughs> you can watch it later. Okay, I'll, I'll watch it with my husband. Okay. I'll ask him for a couch date tonight. It, it, but, you know, he we love to watch t The Twilight Zone. Okay, all right. <laughs> and there's so many times where you're just like, oh, my gosh, how did they know? <laughs> exactly, exactly. That is such a good show. There, there's another good one. Um, good. I'm trying to think of it. Uh, Amazing Stories. Uh, it was Spielberg's. Mm. It's older, but it's, it's, uh, it's not as... Um, it's more um, Hallmark, less uh, creep show, but it's still a similar uh, similar vibe in that it's it's these unexpected, uh, you know, magical things happen. You know, whereas you know the Twilight Zone was a little more, you know, they were a little more, you know, uh, <laughs> diabolical things happening. But still, yeah. still worth watching. Worth watching. All right, uh, with mentioning, I mean, um, you talked about uh, um, audio dramas. Uh, I listened to uh, the. Uh, your episode of uh, uh, Gathered by the Ghost Light. Oh yeah, that's my most recent. <laughs> I, I loved. I loved. That was so much fun. That was so much fun. I mean, so um, in for those who don't know, I mean, uh, Gathered by the Ghost Light. So it's a, it's an audio drama podcast, right? Uh, and and there, each episode is you know, different. It's a different, totally different tale. So it's not it's not yeah. um, uh, serialized or whatever. They're they're each individual standalone episodes. Am I am I right mm -hmm. on that? 
And yeah, Jonathan Cook, the producer, will take、uh, screenplays and he will interview the playwright actually after if you listen to the whole show.、Um, so, yeah, they're just all these different ones that are adapted from the stage to audio. Nice. I enjoy,、uh, I love audio, I love audio books. I think you're an audio book fan as well. But、um, mm -hmm. so the one I listened to,、uh, that was、uh, you, that was for, the title is For a Limited Time Only. And that's, that's a horror comedy, right? I mean, that's what you categorize that as. It's a horror romantic comedy. A horror romantic comedy. Okay, <laughs>、yeah. okay. Not safe for kids. No, 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 definitely not.、Uh, parental <laughs> warning on that one. But, but it is very funny. And、um, so you, you play Val, and you and your husband Arlo, so you're trapped in this Italian restaurant turned Phantom Zone. And I was going to use Twilight Zone, but I like Phantom Zone because that's, that's, a, that's a Superman reference, and all the Superman geeks out there will get that. But、uh, turn Phantom Zone. So you're trapped into this, this restaurant and you can't leave until you consume all the breadsticks. But the, the waiter keeps bringing out more stinking breadsticks. And、yes. uh, uh, so my, my,、uh, my first thought was holy crap, how, how grateful are you that that was an audio drama and not、uh, live action where you had to you know, take a bite of a breadstick you know, all day long for four or five days? Oh my gosh, yeah. That, that would be awful. Well, bread is like one of my favorite things. I would hate for it to be ruined. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it was, I mean, it, it was almost ruined for me just listening to it. It's like, oh my gosh, there's more bread. Are you kidding me? Yeah, a few people told me after they listened, they're like, we do not want to eat bread no, I don't <laughs> for even, a very I mean, long time. <laughs> I, I, I could, you know, I was like, as I was listening, I was like, I could smell the garlic breadstick. It's like, oh, that doesn't even, you know, I don't want it anymore. Definitely not.、Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. um, How did your involvement with,、uh, with the podcast, how did that all come about? I mean,、um, yeah, was that an audition thing? Was that a you, you know, group of friends no. thing? Actually, Jonathan and I connected with Jonathan Cook, the showrunner and produ producer, on LinkedIn, like, gosh, sometime last year. And、um, we chatted a bit, and that was that.、Um, and then he reached out to me and he was like, hey, you know, I usually work with talent. Out of my studio, but I want to work you know, with more talent remotely so I can kind of broaden who I work with. Would you be interested? And I read the script and I thought it was so funny that I was like, yes, absolutely. It was just, it was too fun to pass up. Well, that, I mean, that sounds like it was right up your alley. I mean, after, after you know, stalking you on, on, on LinkedIn, I love, I, I've not spent a lot of time on LinkedIn. So I look, you know,、um, it, that's changed a lot. LinkedIn itself has changed a lot. It has. It has. I know. It's funny because people are like, oh, yeah, throw out your IG and your whatever, TikTok. And I'm like, actually, I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> well, I like that. I mean, it, it, it's, they, they've,、uh, I mean, really, because if you think about it, I mean, even Facebook has gotten a little more business oriented. So, so LinkedIn has just got a little more social oriented. I mean, which is, it makes sense. It did. It makes sense yeah, for them、yeah. to morph like that. And I,、uh, so, you know, it's like, well, there's、yeah. more, one more、uh, profile I need to create and, and stay up on, which, you know, gosh. There's too many platforms. Well, you know what? Just pick the ones that you like. That's what I've decided、oh. because I like LinkedIn because it's,、um, it, it's more based on the written text versus like, you know, tons of pictures like Instagram and Reels and, you know, short videos like TikTok where that's not really my thing. I love to write when I have time, which is rare these days. But、um, that's why I like LinkedIn. Nice. What do you like to write? Oh, anything. I mean, I, I've dabbled in writing some fun, like, comedy sketches、Ooh. that I haven't, I haven't put them out yet. I haven't decided exactly what I want to do with them, but I love doing that. And then just, you know, writing general content,、um, whether that's advice or something inspirational or whatever it is. I really love doing that. I'm, I'm curious, how would you describe your comedy style? It's a little satirical. Okay. I would say, yeah, I love satire. And it's,、uh, you know, they're based on experiences that I've had for the most part.、Um, Sometimes, you know, I, some of them are just self deprecating because I think that's funny too. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, I look forward to、uh, seeing or hearing one of those sketches. Maybe one of yours will become one of the uh, uh, audio drama on the podcast. Maybe.、Mm. Well, it's pretty short. It's pretty short. It's meant to be like more of an SNL style,、uh, you know, sketch. So, we, we, 
I feel like, I mean, SNL has been there forever, but I feel like we need another variety show. There's not many comedy variety shows. I'm trying to think. I mean, you have SNL. What else is out there? I know. There used to be Mad TV. and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they there are not many others out there, and SNL is very political, of course. Um, which I mean, I love SNL, but uh, yeah, it would be great to have some more. I've been I've been uh, perusing, or, or I guess binging is the right word, some Carol Burnett. I don't know if that's I mean that's I'm sure way before your day, but man, that there's some good sketch comedy in that. Uh, yeah, well, I actually love Lucille Ball, who yes. is you know her mentor um carol burnett's mentor and i watch i love lucy like on the regular with my kids i'm obsessed she was probably she was my first kind of you know like little view into what comedy could be and when a woman like doesn't have to just be beautiful all the time she can act like an idiot and it's hilarious (laughs) yeah she she definitely uh, nailed it she was so great so great Uh, i i I grew up on a lot of that well i say i grew up it was in reruns but i still uh, watched it regularly love Mm love fred and ethel i mean you know there wasn't a day went by that fred and ethel didn't come over right i mean oh my gosh they're so fun (laughs) everyone everyone needs a fred and ethel everyone needs a fred and ethel just a couple that hate each other that's all you need That was so much fun. All right. So speaking of, of, of uh, you know, video and, and uh, TV, I mean, you, you've got some, some videos out there yourself uh, on your YouTube channel. Uh, and I, I caught uh, the, the uh, cookie uh, parody uh, and that. So, so tell me about that. I mean, did you guys, are you guys friends? I mean, how did that one come about? Yes. Megan Selkie is another voice actor. She is one of my very best friends. Um, we became friends through LinkedIn, actually, well, oh. no, we met at an online VO conference because it was during COVID, and I found her on LinkedIn, and I was like, "You're so funny. We need to be friends." Heck yeah! And that that was that. We literally just became friends. <laughs> and, um, we talk every single day now. And when we first started talking, I was like, "Oh my gosh, I always wanted to do a parody of you know anything." And I was like, let's do this song. Let's make a Christmas parody about how stressful the holidays are. And she has the quickest wit of anybody on the planet. She wrote the whole thing in like maybe 10 minutes. Holy crap. And then, okay. And then, yeah, and then we hopped on a Zoom and recorded it. And it was just fun. Yeah, I, I love I love that you guys. So where, where she's on, where at in the country? She's like. She's in South Carolina. South Carolina. So yeah. opposite coast pretty much. I mean, so. Wow, and then yeah. you guys uh, wrote, uh, filmed, and put this out. Um, and that, uh, what was the title of that song? It was it just the uh, Do you want to Do you want to bake cookies? some cookies? And that was a parody of Do you want to build a snowman? Right? Yeah, that was so yeah. good. I, I I enjoyed that. Are you guys? I mean, you working on any more? I mean, I feel like we need more. Well, we we do. We, oh, we always need more parodies. So we actually. There were a couple of parodies that we did for Clubhouse Room, if you're familiar with Clubhouse. No, and I was going to ask you about Clubhouse. I have have questions there, too. Okay, so there's something on Clubhouse as well that I need to go see. Well, you need to hear, but we don't, we actually don't do the room anymore. We did it for two years strong and it was amazing. And then all of us were just too busy with our personal and professional lives um, to keep it going. But Clubhouse is an audio social platform. Oh. So it's like you hop into a chat room, but you're just using your voice. And then they also have like a chat, you know, if you want to just chat and you don't actually want to talk. Um, but you don't have to worry about video or anything. Everyone's just got a little picture and you can just talk to each other. And so we started a room to, it was gosh, two years ago. So, um, it first started as our friend George and I, and then Megan hopped in like just a couple weeks in and we were just talking to voice actors every week. It was called the working voice actor. And so George is like a musical genius. He's done so many things. We've done a few covers and parodies together. And then the three of us did things. So we did a, um, gosh, I think we did, we did Big Pimpin', <laughs> but we called it Big <clears throat> Wafflin'. <laughs> we did Careless Whisper. Uh, that one was one about... A, a voiceover friend and colleague named Philip Banks, who's just a brilliant voice actor. Oh. And 
Yeah, that one was really funny. But they're all on Clubhouse somewhere. I'll have to. I'll have to send them to you. Yeah, I, I would love to hear those. I mean, I, I love. I love parodies. I love. Yeah, I love all music. Parodies are great though. So Big Pimpin' and what was the what was the waffle one? Um. Well, we called it Big Waffle. Big Waffle. Okay. Big <laughs> yeah. Waffle. Oh. Yeah, we had a big waffle <clears throat> obsession thing, and then the other one was Careless Whisper. Careless Whisper. All right, so so Clubhouse, those, so that's a private room. So the the song though was was the songs public in the Clubhouse uh, area, or was it? Yeah, it's actually not. It was open to anyone. Okay. So the only times we didn't record the rooms are we had game days once a month, and those were really fun. But we didn't record it because we just wanted everyone to have the freedom to come up and you know, play without feeling like, oh my gosh, I hope a casting director doesn't listen if they screw something up yeah. um, or say something inappropriate. Um, and then the only other times that we didn't record were mental health days. So mm. we occasionally, yeah, we had a couple of those because mental health and VO is a big thing and, you know, it's important to talk about it. Absolutely. Uh, mental health is so overlooked. I, I mean, life, life can be a struggle and, you know, it, it's not, um, you know, you can, you can go, everyone Pretty much everyone has access to, you know, regular health care, but mental health care, it's you, you just don't, uh, you know, you don't you don't have it on the corner. Right. I mean, I think there's some more online mm-hmm. resources. And, and I was really excited when when our employer added to our uh, we have the Teladoc option, which I don't know if, if you have that or ever heard of that. But but they're now offering mm-hmm. mental health through Teladoc as well, uh, which okay. I thought that was was amazing. I mean, because, um, you know. So many times, uh, so much of what ails us can, you know, is, is mental, you know, is, is our, our spirit, you know, and it needs, you know, it needs as much attention as, as your, you know, your daily cardio, you know. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad true. to see it becoming more, more mainstream, more mainstream. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> it, parodies, love them. Uh, so hopefully we'll see one or two more. I mean, you know, uh, what uh, you mentioned, you like to watch animation with your kids. What, what's your favorite? What, what's your go-to guy? What do you guys like to watch? Ooh, um, gosh, my kids love, um, we used to play the waffle song all the time. Why is it? The name is just escaping me. Um, how old are they? Uh, they're 14 and seven. Okay. 14 and seven. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. But I love trolls. Like I'm a big trolls fan. Oh heck yeah! I, oh gosh, I love. I mean, we just saw. You know, did you see the third one? I'm not yet. I, I, there, there's so much content I've got to watch, but, but I love animation. A lot of I love animation. Yeah. I'm, I'm currently rewatching Avatar: The Last Airbender because of the, the the live action that came out. So I'm like, I I binged all of it, and so now I'm going back and watching the animated series again because I'm like, mm. I want some more Avatar. I mean, it's good stuff. We haven't watched it yet. We probably should. I just, again, I lean into anything that's more comedic than <laughs> anything else. Well, that's what I like about Aang is he's the the main the lead character. He's very, uh, he's kind of slapstick. I mean, he's he's he feels like like a like a twelve year old kid, even though he's technically a hundred and hundred and twelve, but he's still oh. he's still a twelve year old kid, and and he's he's goofy, but he's he's yeah. but he's the Avatar. So yeah. it's it's a good one to watch. It's a good one to watch. So, but what uh, did you remember? It. What you and the kids like to watch? Um, you know, what? I'm trying to remember, and for some reason, I just can't. Think so, did they right also now. like I'm trolls? Like, they did. My daughter loves trolls. My son, you know, not so much anymore. Yeah. Um, we just watched Kung Fu Panda. Oh. Uh, anything by DreamWorks is like, just you know, I love it so much because it's always so clever. It's mm-hmm. always so funny. So I love Kung Fu Panda. Huge Jack Black fan. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If if uh, if you were to uh, get your dream role in Kung Fu Panda, what you know, who who would you like to be? Ooh. With the mantis, the 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 what's the snake? I'm trying to think of the snake's name. You know, I don't know, but I would I would want my own character. You want your course. own separate character, and, yes. and what animal would it be? Well, I've always said I we actually have a huge painting downstairs of our spirit animals. <laughs> okay, uh, exactly, perfect. What what's the spirit yeah, animal? I'm a squirrel. Of course. <laughs> squirrel. That's that's probably my spirit squirrel. animal as well. <laughs> yeah, I have ADHD. I am definitely a squirrel, and the painting is amazing. It's done. If I can plug our uh, Lisa Woods, she's a absolutely. She illustrates children's books, oh. and um, 
Yeah, she's amazing. So she does these like family portraits with your spirit animal. And it's like my husband's playing on the piano and he's a polar bear. I'm singing into a spatula and I've got my, you know, like pan. My daughter and my son are fighting over like a toy. <laughs> it's just. Oh, that sounds amazing. Are, are you guys, it's all in, so you're all in the same painting? Yeah, so we're all in it. It's just like her and I, you know, we talked about what exactly I wanted it. And I just wanted a snapshot of what life was like at that moment. That is so and that's cool. I love that. You're going to have to send me a picture of that. You're going to have to take a picture and send it to me. I want to see that. I will. That I will. sounds amazing. And, and what was her name again? Lisa Woods. Lisa Woods. Okay. And I'm assuming she takes commissions, huh? She does, yeah, nice. and it's it's well worth your while because it's, I mean, she does all different kinds of styles, but it was something else. Mm. Mm. I can't wait to see that. I'm excited. Just hearing about that, I'm excited to see that. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of fun. All right, um, I, I so I caught, um, and it was on, I think it was on uh, LinkedIn, you posted about Brene Brown, and I just absolutely love Brene Brown. I I love. I, I, I met, or I first heard her at a conference and then just started digging in from there because i mean what she had to say was just like <laughs> where were you 20 years ago or whatever you know right i mean you know it's just like you know blows your mind what um what has been uh for me my, my biggest revelation was the the story she tells about swimming across the lake with her husband and mm. uh you know he he uh uh, I think just ignores her and, and flat out leaves or something like that. And, and she's thought and she's made up this whole story in her mind that, you know, he's, he's, he doesn't like her anymore. She's, he's ready to leave her, this, that, and the other. And he's just, he's just actually just freaking out because he's trying to figure out how to make sure everyone's safe and getting across there. And, and so mm -hmm. for me, it's like, you know, stop, stop making up the story in my mind and actually take the time to communicate and figure out what's really going on. And that, that was a huge revelation for me because you know, what we make up in our minds nine times out of 10 is not right. You know, true. That is so true. I mean, it's useful in voice acting, but that's it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. So what have you yeah. had? I mean, what's been your big Brene Brown? Like, Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Um, I, I love her so much. I love listening to her in different podcasts. I will say, so I have Atlas of the Heart and that's um, one of her more recent books. And it's really just, it's like a glossary of all these different terms, just basically terms to describe your emotions. Mm. And I found that it was so fascinating to go through and like opening my eyes to like, oh my gosh, it is so important to have this vocabulary to be able to articulate exactly how you're feeling and uh, let someone know, like without that, there's a break in communication because people don't know how to articulate, no, this is how I'm feeling because of this, you know, mm. X, Y, Z triggered me or this, you know, um, where instead we don't have that vocabulary, we don't use it, we don't recognize the feelings, so we spit out something completely different. We're like, wait, that's not what I mean. You mm -hmm. know, um, I thought that I think that's probably been my biggest, biggest revelation is just taking a step back and being like, wait, let me, let me internalize what exactly is it that I'm feeling? Where do I feel it in my body? How do I communicate that? Mm. And that's something that she, I think, has really, she's so good at articulating what so many of us want to say and don't know how. And then she's trying to teach us how. Yeah, absolutely. What was the name of that book again? Atlas of the Heart. Atlas of the Heart. Okay. I, I've read yeah. Daring Greatly. I mean, that, that one I'd, I'd gotten and read, but I'm going to have to check that one out. Atlas of the Heart. Yeah. Very good. Really good. I love that. I yeah. love that. It, it, um, you mentioned pot, her podcast. Uh, my, my favorite is where uh, she has Brett Goldstein on from Ted Lasso. Have you listened to that one? Oh my gosh, I haven't. I actually, I don't even listen to her podcast. Now I should because I love Ted Lasso. But I listened to her being interviewed by um, Dax Shepard and oh, yeah. Monica Padman on Armchair Expert. Yes, yes. I, that's my favorite. That's your, okay. I was going to ask you. So Armchair ar armchair Experts, right? Yeah, Armchair uh, armchair Expert. Um, yeah. <laughs> Word, words are hard sometimes. <laughs> are hard i don't know why anyone pays me to do this no i'm just kidding <laughs> no i know why I've, I've heard, all right give, give give me the elevator voice once because you do an amazing elevator voice oh when i going down yeah. that one <laughs> yes exactly exactly 
Yeah. Oh my gosh. Do you, I didn't realize that at other, like in other states, the DMV just has a person that's like, you know, uh, no, ticket number 17 to window seven. Um, because here in California, it's all automated and it's like, now calling G17 at window number 11. <laughs> you so can mess with people. <laughs> you so can mess with people. <laughs> I do. <laughs> that is so good. That is so good. You're 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 amazing. I love that. I love that. Um, Thank you. Oh, oh, oh. All right. So I have to ask you this one after after reading this this uh, the Canvas Rebel uh, article. Uh, you said uh, you like waffles and yoga pants, and these are the things of a good life. So I, I want to know the the culinary expert that you are. Uh, what <laughs> uh, what describe for me uh, the best waffle. Oh my gosh, the best waffle. The best waffle. I mean, how how would you make okay. it? What would it have on it? Where would you eat it? Uh, well, the best waffle to me is slightly crispy around the edges, you know, but it's like golden and it's not, not crunchy. It's not supposed to be too crunchy. If you want crunch, you can add a little like candied pecan. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, yum, yum, yum. I mean, it has to be still fluffy on the inside. So it can't be soggy and it can't be crunchy. It has to be just crisp on the outside, fluffy on the inside. I like mine um, like candied pecan and bananas with a little maple syrup mm. and some salted butter. Mm. Yes. Yes. That's mm. like, that is perfection right there. <laughs> salted butter, candied pecans and walnuts. Mm. Yeah. And fresh maple syrup, uh, right? Bananas. Oh, and bananas. Oh, yeah. I love bananas. Bananas. Everything, bananas. everything needs bananas. I think so too. Bananas I mean, like just elevate. I just peanut butter toast, bananas. That's oh, how yeah. you elevate everything. Okay. Have <laughs> Have you done the the grilled peanut butter and banana sandwich? Ooh, I've done peanut butter banana French toast. Oh, okay. So that's where you make the sandwich, and then like kind of like instead of just grilling it like you would a grilled cheese, you dip it in a French toast batter, and then you make uh, it. Oh, it's so good. That sounds amazing. We um. Mission Bay down uh, way south of you, down near San Diego. There's there's a um, I'm trying to think of the name of the place. I can't think of the name of it. I'll think of it later. Come to me in the middle of the night. But they they make um, French toast. But they they I mean typical. And then uh, after they do the first coating, they coat it again in uh, honey bunches of oats. They actually crunch that cereal up and coat it in that. And then uh, that's like that's like another level, right? It's a whole other level. Whole nother love. I mean, sometimes there's some places that they go a little, little overboard. Yeah, you, you know, too it's sweet like, is the wrong. You got to have the right yeah, balance. Yeah, it's got to be like the right thing. I mean, there's another place they do like a fruity pebbles crusted one, and that's really great, but it is a little too much for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, uh, that one was just right. Was just right. I wish I could think of the name of the place. I'm going to have to go figure it out now again. Anyway, all right. So speaking of, of food and, and gathering, so I understand you come from a large family. I mean, how, many brothers and sisters? I mean, how, how many brothers and sisters do we have? Well, I have three sisters. Oh, wow. Um, but, yeah, and I, I'm Egyptian, right? So, like, it's like, have you seen my big fat Greek wedding? <laughs> yes, that's that's one of that's our favorite like shows. That's like my fam- Is it? <laughs> yes, my wife and I love so that show. That's so funny. Yeah, is there a show now, or is it just the movie? The movie, well, yeah, the movie, the movie. Oh. Well, there's two. Yeah. There's two, right? Yes, and I don't think I've seen the second. I think there might actually be a third. To yeah, be honest, yeah. but I, I think I, I think after the first one, I checked out though. Same. My, yeah, my wife loves it, but them that's all. very much my family. That's it's huge. Everyone's crazy. It's loud. Every, there's a lot of meat. <laughs> a lot of meat. And the, the, do you have a vegetarian in the family? <laughs> um, <laughs> my sister has tried to be vegetarian yeah. or vegan for you know a period at a time but she i believe right now is eating meat oh may have fell off yeah. the wagon i mean it's almost impossible you know it's like everything in our, every family gathering it is meat based it is we we are such a you got to have you got to have the meat you got to have the starch you got to have the vegetable you got to have the bread and you got to have the dessert right yeah it all has to be there what yes. what um so at the gatherings what has to be on the table or the world just isn't right i mean i, I know our tube what what's your dish that has to be there 
Um, you know, most of the time my mom makes it, but it's always lamb. There has to be lamb ah. or the world is wrong. Everything's wrong. Now, how's the lamb prepared? I've never, uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever had lamb. I, I can't think of it. Really good. It, well, a leg of lamb. So she would prepare it. If you're going to prepare a leg of lamb, it has to be like a low and slow kind of thing. So it's, you know, in the oven all day, kind of like nice and low. It kind of creates its own marinade. Um, I mean, she seasons it really well. And it's so it's just so good. It's just so dang good. Mm, so low and slow, <laughs> lots of marinade. Yeah, mm. I mean, like, just lot, lots of onions, lots of garlic. <laughs> well, you got to have the aromatics. I mean, those go, I mean, without saying. You know, you just throw those in a pan and everyone comes around. It's true. Garlic is its own food group, as far as I'm concerned. Absolutely. Absolutely. It goes on everything, kind of like bananas. Exactly. Maybe when you try garlic and bananas together. I would. <laughs> I, I would probably try it. We'll see how long it lasts. We'll see how long it lasts. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so what 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 do you have coming up? I mean, what what's in the works for Rochelle? So, most recently, I'm working um on a platform called Pocket FM. Oh. And Pocket FM is uh it they're a global platform where they just put out tons and tons of content like audio dramas and audiobooks. Mm -hmm. Um and the great thing about it is that you don't have to pay for it like Audible. There are ads and you can pay to remove the ads. But I'm in a few multicast shows that are not quite yet out. They'll be out probably within the next few weeks. Okay. Um, and that's, it's just, it's really fun. They take uh, audiobooks and turn them into multicast audio dramas. Oh, okay. Okay. So, so multicast, so you have multiple people uh, in, in all the different roles. Uh, so you get the variety mm -hmm. of voices. I love, I mean, I love audiobooks. Listen to them all the time. We, um, we just drove to Florida and, and Audible, Sorry. Audible saved, you know, saved us all the way down there. Without Audible, we wouldn't, wouldn't have made it. So the, the platform again, you said it was what FM? What's it called? Pocket. Pocket. pocket okay. FM. So just in your pocket, Pocket FM. Pocket Just FM pocket. right there. And yeah. uh, that is so cool. I'm, it, it, so you have some out or you the, the ones you're working on are still coming out, right? The ones I'm working on are still coming out. There is another audio drama that is just like that you can find on a podcast. That one, gosh, she said early this year it'll be released. So I don't think I can drop the name yeah, no. yet, but it should be um, out soon. And yeah, those are those are the things that I'm working on currently. I love audio dramas, and, and probably the best yeah. place. I mean, LinkedIn is the best place to follow to find out when those dramas are when they hit, when they drop. Yeah, yeah, that's where I leave the most updates. I don't always like post about all my work and everything that I'm doing, just because you know there's so much else to write about. And uh, as Philip Banks says, um, voiceover is the least interesting thing about me. <laughs> Well, I I had a ball digging through and, and just learning all about. You. I mean, I love I love everything I listen to. I love the cover songs, the Coco cover songs. Uh, those are Thank great. You. Um, that, that, Thank you. Another one of my favorites. I have so many favorite movies, but I mean, what's not to love about Coco? I mean, come on, right? Yeah, that that right there, that is movie perfection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love. And when I wanted to do that, that actually it was like the stars aligned. I fell in love with the songs. I found these two guitarists. They were doing stuff called Guitar Mini Duo, mm -hmm. and they actually had painted their guitars to look like oh, the guitars. I saw from that. Coco. I noticed that. As so talented, and they've both have gone their like separate ways to do their own thing, and they're just musical geniuses. So they, um, but I, I'm glad I caught them when I did because we did the cover, and it was so fun. Yeah, those are great. And those are on your YouTube channel. And I want to remind everyone, I mean, so um, when they're looking for you, uh, you spell your name, it's R-O-S-H-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, right? Yes, not with a C. Not with a C. Everybody so, spells it with a C. Yeah, I, I wanted to make sure we caught that. So it's Rochelle, R-O-S-H-E-L-L-E -L -L -E, Simpson. And then your website is RochelleSimpsonVO.com. Is that right? That is correct. So Rochelle Simpson VO dot com. Uh, and that's that's, you know, LinkedIn. You are Clubhouse, you said you're not as is uh you're not on that very much anymore. I'm kind of intrigued by Clubhouse to be honest with you. I like the fact of being audio only. I mean I, I see that adding a yeah. a different a different level to the experience. Um 
You know, I mean, we're all used to Zoom or, or you know, in, you know, video versus mm -hmm. uh, I think the audio aspect of it might be interesting. I'm going to have to check that. And there's all kinds of groups out it there, is. right? Tons and tons of voiceover groups, tons of really everything. I mean, some of the um, voiceover groups have moved to LinkedIn audio, mm -hmm. but I mean, we always joked like the best thing about audio only is you can wait for your Biore pore strip to dry yes, while you're talking. Yes, <laughs> yes. You don't have to have all the lights and stuff on around you. And, you know. Yeah. You can. Yeah, and they they were people. If people are interested in in Clubhouse, they can go and find our room and actually listen to replays if they wanted. Okay. There was always a different you know voiceover topic, and we covered like everything under the sun. Oh, nice. Okay, I'm going to check that out. I, I started to make an account and I didn't finish it, so I need to finish that and go out there and look at that more. I, I didn't realize it existed. So very nice. That, that's, I love, that's why I love doing this. I mean, I learn so much every, you know, every time I sit and talk with someone. I mean, not only do I get to make a new friend, but I, I learn stuff along the way. So I really enjoy that. So. Yeah. yeah, well, this has been super fun. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Rochelle, thank you so much for taking time out of your, your busy life. Uh, you know, uh, I appreciate it. Uh, be sure and, and tell the kids that I said hello and the husband. I didn't I didn't ask you. Okay, so what's what's his cosplay? I got to know before we go. What's what's he like to cosplay as uh, before? Gosh, yeah. He, yeah, I don't. Oh, my gosh. I feel like I should know that. <laughs> oh, no. It's been like nine years. Okay. <laughs> now I don't. Okay. I'm going to find out. I'm going to tell you. We're going to pretend like I knew the whole time. Okay. Uh, no, I'm, I'm just going to I'm just, just going to edit that part out. <laughs> He he hasn't he hasn't talked about it, so maybe it wasn't that important. Uh, I, you know, uh, <laughs> me, I'm cosplay obsessed, so yeah, definitely. Uh, but uh, you know, it's just fun to do. You'll have to you when when the kids are a little older. Actually, they probably like going to some of the the comic cons. They're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. My son probably would. But they're so so crowded that I've just yeah. They're, they're, you can find smaller ones. You just got to kind of look and know where to go. But there's smaller ones out there, and they're a lot of fun. And I, I especially, I mean, you get to meet, you know, some of the, some of the, you know, voice actors such as yourself uh, behind some of these characters, um, which is a lot of fun. Very cool. Right. Very cool. Yeah. Well, Rochelle, have a wonderful evening. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, I know I'm, I'm looking forward to the picture of the spirit animal picture. I want to see that one definitely. <laughs> and I can't wait to hear the other audio dramas coming out. Thank you so much for having me on, and it was such a pleasure. Wonderful. Have a wonderful evening. You too.